All right, hello, Danger Noodles. I am very sorry. Streamlabs will never be used again <laughs> until I get my computer fixed, because I think my computer's also the issue. All right, so let's go back to reading where I left off, because it, it cut off right where, right there, so at least it didn't cut off further on. Uh, but hold on, I gotta do something first. It sh it shouldn't sh crash anymore because it's not Streamlabs. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, all right. From Dr. Dominic Jensen to Site Director, oh, Site Director Douglas. Yeah, they wrote Site Director twice. Subject proposal 2123-245, attachments 2123-245A underscore data redacted, 2123-245B dot doc. Dr. Redacted's tests have produced several intriguing results. Firstly, study of neutral kaons produced within SCP-2123 has shown them to consist entirely of K to zero power, with K to zero power being absent. No escalation has been observed. Se second, studies of the past of particles have shown charged kaons the mate D masons and B masons to clump together with similar charged particles. The exact force causing this is not clear. However, increasing energies of one TeV allow these clumps to exist for up to 10 to the negative 10 power longer. I I'm glad I took it one in math, advanced math class to know what who the power shit is. <laughs> Anyways, it is of my own and Dr. Redacted's opinion that study of the force binding these masons may be easier to study at higher energies. Current models predict that SB2123's maximum output is approximately 50 PeV, therefore collision energies of at least 1 P 5 PeV as we believe are necessary to study this phenomenon are possible. Attached to this email are the complete results of study of 2123-245A, as well as a revised proposal for 2123-245B, courtesy of Dr. Redacted. We patiently await your response. From Site Director Douglas to Dr. Redacted, CC, Dr. Dominic Jensen, Subject Restudy 2123-245B. SCP-2123 is currently undergoing testing to ensure power increases will not have any detrimental effects on, con on containment. Study 2123-245B is on hold pending the results of this test. From Site Director Douglas to Dr. Redacted, CC, Dr. Dominic Jensen, Subject free at study 2123-245B. As testing has revealed no dangers besides increased emission of radiation permission to operate SB2123 at energies of 5 PeV on a bi-weekly basis has been granted for 180 days beginning on uh, April 8th. Per permanent approval is pending. From Dr. Thomas to Dr. Dominic Jensen. Subject unusual results of masonic escalation tests. Over the past month, I have been using non anomalous linear particle accelerator to attempt to replicate Dr. Redacted's results in study 2123 245b. At this time, I have been unable to replicate Mason clumping that was observed in this, in this experiment. However, a more unusual result has been observed. Observation of K-on, B-Mason, and D-Mason affiliation 
has shown unusual patterns in the ratio of particles to antiparticles. During initial testing, the ratios were exactly the first of what was expected, with concentrations of k to the zero power, b to the zero power, and d to the zero power being up to 5% greater than their corresponding particles. Repeated testing confirmed this result. On redacted, two weeks after testing commenced, concentrations of k to the zero power, b to the zero power, and d to the zero power returned to normal levels and remained so far so for the following two weeks, ratio of particles to antiparticles continued to reverse at a consistent rate of at once every two weeks. It should be noted that, the, that this directly correlates with the timing of the current tests being conducted with SB2123. I have spoken in person with Dr. Redacted and presented my concerns. He has referred me back to you. I request that testing on SB2123 be halted immediately until the full implications of this phenomenon are fully addressed. To Dr. Redacted, Site Director Douglas. From Dr. Dominic Jensen, subject termination of study 2123-245. At this time, I am ordering an immediate stop to study 2123-245 due to the unacceptable risk of Redacted indicated by several experiments conducted on site and at sites redacted, redacted, and redacted. I request an emergency containment meeting be held within the next 72 hours. Further concerns will be addressed at that time. All right, 2123 alpha. This is where it was fully confirmed why it's Keter. So, this is the most important addendum. The following document is classified level 4 2123 clearance. All personnel receiving level 4 2123 clearance are to be briefed using the following documents. First of all, let me congratulate you on the promotion. Now, I know you're curious about what's behind those redacted brackets. If you weren't, then you wouldn't be reading this. You've been looking through SB 2123's documentation, trying to find any piece of information that can provide answers. There are a few nuggets of information that were intentionally left in the database, which we have watched you synthesize together over time on this project. Maybe it's been a month, maybe a year. But here we are. We found enough. You found enough to come to your current conclusion, consciously or otherwise. You're sitting down in a private room and reading this text. Now it's time for the answers. Yes, your conclusion was correct. Once again, if it wasn't, you wouldn't be reading this. So let's remove all doubt from this. SB 2123's excursion events cause CP inversion on a massive, possibly infinite scale. Our universe is converted from matter to antimatter, and vice versa on a bi-weekly basis. Of course, we're still here. The Earth continues around the Sun as the Sun circles our galaxy. Our multitude of objects stays in containment. Indeed, the change is subtle. But we know that the implications of this are, at best, rather unfortunate. Since our universe popped into existence, matter and antimatter were never perfect opposites. Matter was a small bit more stable, and a small bit more of it was produced. Due to the phenomenon that you know as CP violation, it is because of this imperfect balance why anything exists in our universe at all. It is because of this asymmetry why we have noticed inversions caused by excursion events, is this effect that now undermines the stability of every single object in creation. We estimate that at least redacted YG of material have been annihilated thus far by excursion events. This on its own constitutes a YK class restructuring scenario every two weeks. By receiving 4-2123 clearance, you are being reassigned to research ways to stop excursion events. All data related to current testing is now available for you to read. Please keep all proposals focused on containment. Trying to use this thing to study our universe has done nothing but to put everything at a great risk. Site-2123, oh. Director Douglas. This thing is just destroying the universe and re-putting it back. Oh. Jesus Christ! I thought 
the like the Jinx SCP was bad. This was worse. Jesus Christ. Well, it definitely explained why it was Keter. But hold on, let me look up what YK class means. Alright. SCP XK. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Do, 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 do. No, wait, wrong one. Oh yeah, XK class. No, there, there we go. So it was YK thickness. All right, primary definition for YK. Basically, always a physics-based apocalypse, usually has a specific sub-destination, alternate titles, uh, entropic annihilation, end of the universe scenario, reality restructuring event, restructuring scenario, and vacuum decay. Well then... That, uh, this probably goes all the way at the top. Uh, <laughs> there's no there's way. No, there's, there's no arguing. It's terrifying. I thought it was, I thought it was going to be something like the Henderson Collider, like just. Why is this the first thing we look at? when we do the, the new thing. Why is this the first one? It's just like, oh yeah, by the way, there was an and SCP to constantly destroy our universe and putting it back. <laughs> <laughs> you you're about to say something, Adorno? I'm going to say it's a problem because um, it's good to get you all it's going to start you off on something that will drag, that will pull you in. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I put, I'm posting next SCP picture. Um, Sanju, as far to my knowledge, unless it's a god SCP, no, there's no actual SCPs that are mainly known to do this. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, the O55, but that needs, they need to be together to activate it. Yeah, O55 and 579, I think their name, no, numbers are. But they have to be together to activate it, and, uh, they're se permanently separated for a reason. <laughs> oh, well, at least we're about to go into a J number. Which is SCP twenty one thirty dash J. Which is also called But Seriously Folks. Oh no. Oh, come on. <laughs> they changed the, the name of how you read the object class, which is which is K-tar. It's like the word key and tar put together. Oh my gosh. <sighs> why, why don't we go to the next SCP? Maybe uh, it's not as horrifying as this one. Oh no, I just, I'm about to start it. it it's SCP-2130-J, so I highly doubt it. <laughs> But they change. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard this, Jerry. But the object class, it's it's called Ktar, not Keter. I'm still calling it Keter. Cause oh, they, wait, what? 
Yeah, they spell it K-E-Y-T-A-R. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, wait, so it has to, so does this have to do with music or some shit? Probably. I mean I sent only... I sent a picture That's associated to the reason. SCP. <laughs> That's the only reason I could think of that it would be called Kitar. I just saw the first sentence and no it's not. <laughs> SCP-2130-J is a bunch of office furniture that was found lying around at various foundation sites. Okay, that's weird. That is so weird. Okay, that's 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 so weird. Okay, it's not, though. It's actually really dangerous. One might say spooky, junior researcher Kimmy says. Kim, the last time you tried to convince us that the furniture was haunted, it's because you just stubbed your toe on a desk, although watching you hop around was quite amusing. Dr. Free Wheeler. <laughs> hey, it really hurt, you know, junior researcher <laughs> Kimmy. <laughs> you know the chair, right? They do know the chair, right? <laughs> yeah. But, 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 For some reason, this reminds me of Bright's small war against the one death. <laughs> you know what this the, the chair thing reminds me of? It reminds me of that one SCP where we have to imagine it being a chair, since it, it can be literally anything that it's imagined by. And if we don't imagine it being a chair, it can be very dangerous. Yeah, that's an SCP. <laughs> it's called Just a Chair. <laughs> that's what's making me remind me of stuff, and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was actually talking about the chair that was, um, you, you know what, by like... Uh, oh, the GOC chair. Yeah, the GOC. Yeah. Oh, uh, anyway. On with the SCP. SCP 2130 J exhibits a range of cognito hazards and antimimetic properties. Its primary effect is on the perception of the furniture by subjects and its proximity. Subjects regard SCP 2130 J instances and any instance involving them as humorous in nature, regardless of the objective seriousness of the situation. Fictions of SP 2130-J by test subjects have included funny, hilarious, uproariously entertaining, a great night out. I could see why, what see what you were going for, but it did make me laugh. Downvoted. This primary effect has led subjects forgetting the danger posed by SP 2130-J and attempting to use SP 2130-J instances for comic purposes. Yeah, I remember when I held a D-class roller chair derby, and one of them crashed into you and fell off into a vat of SP-682's acid. Classic, junior researcher, uh, clear. Classic, that was the most horrific thing I've ever been through. My back was sore for a week, Dr. Uh, junior researcher Kimmy. Or that time my, my top shelf broke and all my researcher forward landed on your head one after the other and then my pot plant and then my bowling ball i got so many likes for that on slash foundation slash not work slash funny slash videos it was awesome maybe you should do comedy junior researcher flyer is everyone around here anomalously unsympathetic junior researcher kimmy this just sounds like fooling around in the office <laughs> yeah SCP-2130-J's primary effect can be con counteracted by a continuous curse of class Y and amnestics. However, as the side effects of such treatment include remembering in vivid detail, every fart you've ever smelled uptake has been poor. Has been poor. 
SP2130 J has a secondary property which affects any attempt to describe the anomaly. Any descriptions of SP2130 J, even by persons not subject to its primary effect, will be written in such a way as to be unintentionally comic with ludicrously overcomplicated procedures and extraneous commentary that which reads as if all researchers involved are 15 years old. See, that explains why I can never write this in a clinical tone. It explains the containment procedures. It explains everything. They said I was mad. Mad. But actually, I was right all along. <laughs> Wait, why am I writing all, all of this like I was saying it out loud? Junior researcher Kimmy. Uh... Kim, you are a lot more fun to be around when you are falling off that lab bench last week. If you're so obsessed with that damn office furniture, why don't you prepare a seminar and take it to the take it on the road to the other sites. Make sure you take a few samples with you. Dr. Hot Wheeler. This is clearly going, going to end well, Junior Researcher Kimmy. Addendum. Further researcher by Comedy Task Force IOTA ADA PI 2, Y IOTA, suggests that the effect of SCP 2130 J is viral in nature. Progression appears to occur in the following manner. Uh, one, su subject is exposed to SP2130 J and becomes subject to its effects. Two, subject A begins to find other anomalies inherently humorous. Subject, uh, three, subject A demands the documentation for other anomalies to include overcomplicated containment and unintentional comedy. Uh, four, subject B reads amended documentation, forgets that the relevant anomalies are dangerous and begins to treat them as comical. Even if subject B has not been exposed to SP2130 J, the following database entries have been identified as potential candidates for SP2130 J infection SCP2212, SCP2845, SCP076, and SCP106. However, the possibility exists that other anomalies have been declassified and misfiled after relevant SCP documentation was amended to sound humorous. So leaving aside the question of how we tested this, that means basically anything filed in slash foundation slash not work slash funny slash joke SCPs could be real could be a real anomaly that were almost totally this re oh. Oh shit. Junior researcher Kimmy. Kim, what's the rush? Why are you running so... Whoa, wow. Hey, guys. Kim just tripped over a printer cord and went head first into the waste paper basket. That's going to leave a mark. <laughs> Dr. Steeler's Wheeler. As stupid as this SCP sounds, it can be used as a weapon. Because it makes you think other SCPs are funny. It can be used as a weapon, effectively. So I don't, I don't know where to put this. At first, I was thinking spoo tier, but at the same time, it can be used dangerously as a weapon, because, like it said, it fooled people into thinking 106 and 076 are funny. And those are two of the most dangerous SCPs. Like it should be put in uh, certain groups because those yeah. people that are dangers are people that fall fall in under its breath. It yeah. can exactly reach all around the world under a day or anything like that. Yeah. At first, I thought this was just to be really stupid, and I realized, oh shit. Problem is, what if they made? Problem is, what if they made? Like somebody made somebody think a world or um, universe ending SCP was funny. Yeah, that's true. It, it's. Oh, fudge. Yeah. That's why I said this SCP can be used as a weapon. Oh, you're right. Even though it only affects certain people on its own. If it affects people who have any control over certain SCPs, it would 
and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not certain where it goes anymore. I think we leave it at certain groups for now, mainly because it it hasn't been used showing it go being used any stronger than 106 and 076. And they can't break out to cause massive amounts of damage any bigger than a city at the moment. Or a certain group. Either of the two. Yeah. So, so as far as we know, it can't go any higher than that. Yeah, so I think at, at the moment, it's fine to keep it in certain groups, unless we find out more information that makes it more deadly. I also realized that the Dr. Wheeler's name kept changing. It was Free Wheeler at first, then it was... Hot Wheeler, then Steelers Wheeler. <laughs> Their name kept changing. Probably because they thought whoever was writing it thought it was funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that. I I just thought that thing was just gonna be funny, but no, we just found a new weapon. Ain't that just great? We, we found literally two joke SCPs that can be used as a weapon. One is like, well, what's the worst that could happen? And this. <laughs> like, what the hell? Why are some of the joke SCPs such a dangerous weapon? Uh... <laughs> All right, all right. The the nick nick nickname for this is just amazing. I sent a picture in stream chat. The next SCP is twenty one thirty one. I just thought they were different people. <laughs> yeah, the next SCP is twenty one thirty one, also known as the Anti Pope. Wait, wait, why anti pope? Oh. Yeah, anti pope. Yeah. <laughs> the SCP that criticizes Christianity. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, no, or do they like attack other pope? Or do they actually like attack? Do they like attack? Okay, question is is this a good SCP or a bad one? Oh no. Where they attack bad Pope. Oh no. Bad Why did you go oh no? Uh they're created by Marshall Carter and Dark, and if you know them, they they're disturbing. I don't know them. There was this alright, there was this one person who made a deal with them that they'll be boy for so so years to make up for the money they came to be oh. here's the thing the toy you're allowed to do anything with their body and they feel every second of it and are consciously notes with it but they can never speak or show any emotion oh. except for an emotion you give them they are dark as fuck and if they're the creators of this it's, yeah, they've done even more disturbing stuff than that. So, we're about to get into this. <laughs> so, what you said it there could be on the table, but it could also be much worse. Oh. Why was I added? Oh, choose, choose streaming. Alright. Anyways. SCP-2131 is a human male claiming to be Avignon Pope Bene Benedict XIII. I forgot what number that is. 
<laughs> Satan's book, <laughs> maybe. Upon acquisition, SP-2131 was capable... Hey, 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 don't, don't, don't attack Satan. Satan will be fine. Yeah. Was capable of conversing in a variation of archaic Italian and French, as well as Latin and a previously unknown a Creole la language associated with those three... Associated with those three. Every 16 hours, SP-2131 emits a gamma ray burst associated with a spontaneous conversion of a small amount of its mass into antimatter. A daily prayer ritual des designed to carry out by SP-2131 was proven largely effective in preventing these gamma ray bursts. However, uncontrolled events have become more frequent as containment of SP-2131 has continued with a power prayer ritual showing effectiveness in approximately 95% of events. Gamma ray exposure associated with SCP-2131 is lethal to most living organisms present during an event, with the exception of SCP-2131 and a variety of radiation-resistant microorganisms. SCP-2131's apparent longevity, including a claim to have been born in 1328, has been linked to the gamma ray burst as any physical injury injury is healed during uncontrolled events. This was included in an injury sufficient to cause death. SCP-2131 was originally recovered from Joshua Baptist Church in South Alabama. Several deacons in the church acquired information through the Seventh Society in an effort to assist in a ritual relating to a blood sacrifice. Documents detailing this correspondence have been recovered However, the individual claiming association with the Seventh Society has not been located despite cooperative attempts by both the Foundation and Marshall Carter and Dark. Oh, wait. Marshall Carter and Dark didn't create them, they just helped. I just saw them and immediately thought, oh, they did this. Uh. Usually, Marshall and Carter and Dark despises the Foundation every fabric of their being. Which means if they want to help the Foundation with this SCP, they're doing it for profit. So that's their main quota. The, to sell anomalies for profit. No matter the cost. Basically. Uh. Yeah. Show the addendum. Here we go. Due to the increase in strength related to all Game Array events following Incident 2131-19, SCP-2131's containment procedures will be modified to include preventive measures related to attempts at self-harm. Oh god. I was also approving certain uh, amenities which have been requested for some time and I believe may assist in approving SB2131's morale. However, no cer under, however, under no circumstances should be allowed to self-terminate again, even at the risk of losing personnel. Dr. Isabel Sampson, 2131 Project Director. I would like to caution against what I'm perceiving as a sense of pity for this entity among staff. This object, object is, cer is almost certainly not what it appears to be. Remember, all knowledge of this object's background is sourced directly from SCP-2131. It should also be noted that this object's attempts at self-harm are in direct violation of the object's supposed Catholic beliefs. And perhaps most damning of all, the ritualistic bloodletting involved in the attempt matches historical and archaeological records relating to Davite sacrifice, sacrificial rituals quite closely. Oh god, Davites. Oh goodness. Everyone knows what Davites are, right? I, I believe everyone here does. Does a Derna know? Because I can look that up. A Derna? I'll have some, I guess. Alright, Davites, okay. Uh, let's see. They were basically an ancient organization in uh, Siberia, basically, and yeah, they it basically, yeah, they were antagonist. I don't know what that means. Oh wait, 
antagonist. God damn it. I wrote, <laughs> I wrote antagonist as antagonist. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. But no, there were ancient evil civilization responsible for various anomalies. And they are also associated with the cult of the Scar Scarlet King. And we know who that bastard is. <laughs> okay, so where do we fucking put this fucker? Um... Does it say anything like they... Could, like, negatively affect or anything? Oh, there's two uh, interview logs. Hold on. I get some information. Dr. Sampson, hello again. I'd like to ask a few more questions today. You were born in 1328, correct? Yes. In hell, have you been able to live for as long as you have? My faith in him has sustained me. Can you tell me about where you came from? You must return me to my home. We do not know how to do that, and right now I need you to answer my questions. I ruled the church lands from the moment the Davites murdered Boniface. For nearly eight centuries, I have fought battles for the Lord against the blood demons. The Davites don't exist in our historical records set during the 1300s. Then your records are wrong. They began in the East. The pagans and heretics fell first, and in it is only through our fate that we have won our battles with them. You must return me to my home so that the fight may continue. I understand. We'll keep working on some way to do that. Thank you. Second interview. Hey, I know it's been a while. I've been working on trying to get you home. I have been gone for too long. My people have surely been destroyed. You can't know that. You're right. I don't know it. But the Davites are not known for their t timidness. I had to channel the Lord's power to stop them, without my presence. Is that why the burst events are going uncontained? My faith has waned. I have been cut off from my God, and I have been cut off from my people. The, war the Lord sees my weakness. I see. It doesn't matter. Even if all that awaits me is a Davite blood altar, I have to go back. We'll keep working on it. I promise you'll know as soon as we have a way. Thank you. And that's it. For interview logs. So there was apparently a war against Christians and Davites. Well, that's not exactly unrealistic, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> So the gamma radiation bursts start to, to attack the Davites, which in SCP Universe at this time were wiped out. So... Mm. Yeah. Either they don't know they're wiped out, or they're lying for some reason. So this is troubling. And it's gamma burst radiation. How powerful is a gamma radiation? Instead, it kills most living organisms present. But does the gamma radiation leave radiation behind? Is the question is a real good question. Because if it leaves it behind, it can still affect people. But it doesn't say that, so I, I assume not. What worries me most is that Marshall Carter and Dark are helping with this. Because we know their model, we just sell anomalies to make money any means possible. No matter the circumstance, and no matter how badly it'll affect us. They don't care, and if they 
want this SCP for some reason, that's not a good thing. Which is a good thing it's still in Foundation custody. <laughs> if it wasn't, that would be bad. Yeah, I decided to click on Marshall Carter on Dark Hub, where they talk about themselves. The first sentence literally reads, Why do rich people care about making money? Uh... Yeah, that Emmy, like, implies, yeah. No. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where to place this fucker. <laughs> what? I don't know how. Like, where do we put the Pope? This is a weird thing to say, but you know what? It's a valid thing, and I don't know how to help with it. You know what? We also have a, another person help with the decision. Bookworm. <laughs> Bookworm! <laughs> so, Derna, what's your thoughts so far? So we know... Uh oh. What was that, Nerna? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I wasn't sure if you heard me. I was basically, and it heard me pass say that it's ma mainly shooting the gamma radiations to help defeat the Davides, who are long since dead at this current time in this universe. So, that's a problem. Because they could be lying, or. Or to actually think they're still alive. So that's a problem. Or the Davides could be still alive. Okay, so... Bookworm says, like, one of the most high-energy radiation when I was talking about how dangerous is the game of radiation. So that's also concerning. Because it could leave radiation behind. Could they radiate the like atmosphere too? Yeah, which is also worse. Look, where do we put this? Well, it said a ninety-five percent containment rate for what they're doing now to stop the radiation burst, which means only five percent of the time it's being activated. Mm. So that's a good thing. So currently. What in what the fuck? Yeah. What do you think, Jerry? If we don't know what to put in, we can put in what the fuck. Because it would either be in like no one or like certain group or like um XK. So, yeah. It's oh, so. Is, what yeah. the fuck? The, the person that's best at figuring this out is in here, Hatchet. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, Bookworm says I'm thinking certain groups basically because he has to, he has a prayer to block ninety five percent of the burst, which means five percent are still going off. Yeah, maybe actually maybe continent. Says book. Everyone in agreement to the continent, or what the fuck? Yeah, Jerry, what do you think? Uh, I, I am very bad at picking things. <laughs> so, I typically only have a good idea what to choose when the SCP is more clear cut. Yeah, this SCP just makes you think. I've never been angry at a Pope before, but here we are. <laughs> I mean, I've been angry at a Pope before. <laughs> they messed around with the little children, so why would I not be mad at them? That's fair. <laughs> 
<laughs> or maybe about the guy who dug up a per another pope's body to put on trial. <laughs> Yeah, that was magical. Yeah. Uh, Bookworm also says because his birth seemed to be com coming more uncontrolled, so it could affect the city or continent. I don't know how much gamma radiation would affect the planet versus how much he is giving off. That's true. That's also not stated how much his bursts are. How, like, how big and how dangerous they are. Like, is it like a straight path or is it like in a, in a circle effect, like an explosion? I'm thinking I would go with Booker on the continent. Because radiation can get in the air and cause more damage. Wait, what? I couldn't hear you? I said, uh, radiation can get in the air and cause more damage. Yes, but that's not the only way it can spread and cause damage. Yeah. Uh... So, I am so angry at this pope! <laughs> part of me is angry that I wish that Hatchet was here to help. <laughs> oh. I guess we can actually, when Hatchet comes back, we can come back to it. So let's just leave it at what the fuck and come back to it with Hatchet here. Now we have more. Everyone's here. To talk about it. Well, like, based on like what it is, I would say like either XK or what the fuck would be the best. Yeah. Personally. So yeah, I think <laughs> at the time being, we just leave it there. Alright. Okay. Next SCP is 2150, a breach and command. Hold on, let me get the open chat in here so you can see a picture of it. It's the first picture in the comic. That's the closest I can get to 2150. Uh, okay, uh, breach and command. Hopefully, this one won't be as confusing. All right. Please don't jinx it. <laughs> SCP twenty one fifty is best understood as a memetic anomaly associated with the name Mark. Redacted. A uh, Mark Fishback. I'm sorry. Oh, wait. Bookworm says he knows why he's called the anti pope. What do you mean, Book? Why do you... What is it? What did you find? Tell us. Tell us. Wait, was there. I think this guy was around when there were three popes at one time. Lol. Oh. Uh... Oh, okay. That makes sense. Nice. Anyway, SCP-2150 is depicted as various individuals, the most common resembling a Caucasian male with facial hair. Information pertaining to SCP-2150 will yield varied results, such as the individual's occupation, biological history, criminal records, etc. No two personnel researching SCP-2150 will discover the same information, despite similar search results between personnel because of this accurate Information related to Mark Redacted is impossible to obtain. Any subject who learns the full name of SCP-2150 will identify themselves as Mark Redacted. Any personal information the subject discovers related to SCP-2150 will be retained as information related to themselves. Instances of SCP-2150-1 state that they have no memories except for the information related to SCP-2150. 
If two instances of SCP-2150-1 meet, both instances will exchange information related to SCP-2150. Any new information gained from one instance will be retained as information related to the other instance. If two pieces of conflicting information meet, both instances will settle on an agreement as to which piece of information is correct. Additional instances of SP-2150-1 exchange information results in collective knowledge believing to be true among instances. If a minority of instances hold conflicting information, it will result in a Theta-10 event. During the Theta-10 event, the majority of SP-2150-1 instances will attempt to, dis to discredit the minority. Examples of this have included accusing the minority of crimes in an attempt to convict them. That sounds very wrong. Uh. <laughs> Framing the minority in a scandal in an attempt to deter them from their occupation. This isn't talking about race. This is just talking about a minority of people who believe they're this person. <laughs> Spreading misinformation related to the minority through word of mouth, literature, and other forms of media. Persuading the minority to believe the majority's viewpoint, resulting in the death of the minority. This just sounds really bad. It sounds it, really bad if you don't know the minority is literally people with a certain name. Yeah, that sounds so fucking bad. It's not people, it's not hair color, it's not skin color, it's not eye color, it's a fucking name. Yeah. Any attempt to discredit instances of SP-2150-1 result in said misinformation becoming collective knowledge among all instances. Over time, multiple disputes among instances will severely alter any original information gained from the initial exposure. <laughs> Bookmore says, yeah, Mark seems racist, or just bigoted in general. <laughs> Reintroduction of information to SCP-2150 will override any previous information given from other instances of SCP-2150-1. Addendum 2150-A-14 are redacted a D-Class personnel D-93731 was identified as an instance of SP-2150-1. Despite not being exposed to SP-2150 directly or indirectly, D-93731 and other infected personnel were detained and administered amnestics before re being returned to site redacted. However, repeated amnestic treatment failed to rid D-93731 of the SCP-2150 contamination. On redacted, D-93731 was reported missing from site redacted. Records pertaining to D-93731 existence in site redacted were not found. A junior researcher recovering records of D class personnel was exposed to SCP-2150 on the roster, resulting in accidental exposure. The researcher was detained and is currently being returned to site redacted. The list listed roster was deleted, and a new roster was formed based on the current number of D-Class and site redacted. To date, no other personnel have been identified as an instance through this method. Okay, so this thing can spread like a virus by seeing its name. And it seems to be rather quick. Like, it's not like it takes a few days or a few hours. It's like instant. Like, literal instant. Wait, there's a level, there's a thing for level five personnel. Which is the O5 only. Oh! Addendum 2150-C-12, information restricted to level 5 personnel only. Error. Please input credentials. Error. Denied access. Beginning reboot. Site redacted. Access granted. The original documentation of SV2150 may only be accessed by a personnel with level 5 security clearance. Level 4 personnel requesting access to the original SB2150 documentation 
are to be directed to an alternate version of the current documentation, as of redacted. The original documentation is under possession of 05-redacted. Note of the following information will not cause exposure to SCP-2150. In regards of 05-redacted, I am currently writing to you in hopes of addressing some key issues concerning SCP-2150 and the former site director located in site redacted. I would first like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to write the current documentation of SCP-2150. The document, document has served well in preventing a mass infection due to the exposure of SCP-2150. The confidentiality of sensitive information in combination with alter, alteration of several logs has proven useful in preventing the current info hazards that threaten us. As I have been informed, some O5 members have undergone amnestic treatment prior to promotion, and I am no different. Wait, what was the book I said? But it's, it seems pretty harmless with the worst will happen. People with conflicting information about Mark will get persecuted in some way. That's what we know so far. Well, anyway. Uh, during the writing of SP-2150, I have received safe information regarding the former site director, I have no reason to suspect that the prior of my promotion, I was the site director. My current biological ancestry and criminal records are identical to this man. Upon request, I can provide the documentation to prove my claim. If this is true, then I am a threat not only to the O5 Council, but also to the Foundation as well. Therefore, I request I resign from the O5 Council. Thank you in advance, O5 Redacted. In regards to O5 Redacted, after reviewing the letter you have sent us, in addition to other members, we have decided that we will resign you from the O5 Council. However, the information you have given us is inconsistent to the knowledge of the Foundation. The site director you've mentioned has never existed. We will not view the information due to risk of exposure. Despite the confusion, we thank you for notifying us of this issue and for your service to the Foundation. Thank you. O5 Redacted. In regards to the O5 Council, I it has recently come to my attention that O5 Redacted has resigned due to a mishap regarding the documentation of SCP-2150. I received safe information regarding the former site director in hopes and shed some light on the issue. The information indicates that the name associated with the director was assigned for monthly rotation as a D-class personnel in site redacted. In addition, the original documentation of SCP-2150 is now missing. It is likely that the former O5 Redacted has taken a document with him. It's not a foundation's interest to track down this man, whoever this man may be. It is very likely that he has already infiltrated our highest chains of command. If this is true, the only way to prevent an outbreak is to continue our current protocol. Due to our procedures, no council member knows the full name of SCP-2150. And the near introduction of, of an info hazard is, the wake, is a wake-up call. All we know... For certain is that the hazardous information was presented to us at their promotion of O5 redacted. Uh, of O5 redacted. Fortunately, the O5 council remains uninfected. Stricter container procedures and inf on info hazards are on the way. We can prevent a situation like this from happening again. O5 redacted. Jesus Christ! An O5 member was infected. I think XK class fit. Yeah, Dirt, if you don't know, as well as Book, the O5 members pretty much nearly run the world. And the governments and everything. And they all have pretty much a very powerful anomalous power. And if they become infected, that's really bad. There was actually this one O5 member that died uh, that had the power, whenever they spoke, they can persuade people to do anything. Which is really bad for an O5 member to ever be infected with an SCP. It's really fucking bad. You know what? This is a lot more clear cut than the Pope. <laughs> Definitely SK. Yeah, I'm in agreement on that. Adurna, what do you think? Does it... I know... Th Practicing here, so. Ah. The other thing about this is we have no antidote or thing to stop it, except for a bullet.
Jesus Christ. How about world changing? World changing. Yeah, to be honest, that hasn't killed anyone. To be honest. Well, it said it killed, but like, if only you were in a minority group. That sounds wrong. That it doesn't matter if it hasn't really killed that much yet. Yeah. The fact is, it can. It has gone to an area that if it felt like it could wipe everything out, I would consider XK. Just because being nice doesn't mean it will always be nice. Oh, shit. I forgot something else about the O5. The red right hand. The members that are associated with that O5 member will all automatically leave and constantly protect that member. Because they're very loyal to each member they're supposed to serve to. And Red Right Hand are like balance and power of the Samsara, which is the most powerful MTF force of the Foundation has. So that's another issue. Oh uh, yeah, Book vs. Yeah, that was what I was thinking of. Yeah. Red Right Hand. I, f I forgot about them. That's what, what the Chaos Insurgency was. There were a bunch of Red Right Hands serving this one O5 member that created the organization. That's how it happened. So yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. What the fuck? <laughs> this sounds like a name for a joke SCP, but it's not a joke SCP. The next SCP, but it will affect everyone out there. Yeah. Look. Uh, next SCP is 2162, also known as as normal as blueberry pie. What? <laughs> I kid you not. I, I also posted a picture of it. Uh, well, what a picture of it said it was or whatever maybe i some of these i looked the number up and people said this is that's it scp but it might not be it so get full mad at me okay yeah so we'll find out that is the scp all right scp-2162 is a mobile anomalous construct which consists of a volume of highly concentrated nitrogen gas Testing has shown the interior of the construct as a pressure of approximately 101 kPa, uh, similar to as at atmospheric pressure at sea level, but with nitrogen gas concentration significantly in excess of normal as atmospheric conditions, potentially as high as 100% nitrogen. The construct does not behave in a manner expected of a body of gas. For example, it is not affected by surrounding air pressure or weather patterns and is not impeded by buildings or other structures. Instead, SP-2162 maintains a constant shape and speed and the atmosphere within the boundaries of the construct is spontaneously replaced with nitrogen gas, gas returned to its previous composition once SCP-2162 has passed. Incident 2162-A revealed that SCP-2162 is comprised of three shapes moving information. An arc 16 kilometers in length, 2 kilometers in width, and 750 meters in height. The arc is convex with the centre building towards the direction of travel of the construct. Two wide cylinders 2 kilometers in diameter and 750 meters in height. Cylinders are 4 Colors apart, aligned with either side of the midpoint of the arc, they follow the arc at a distance of six kilometers. The construct of, sh of shape has been verified by atmospheric testing. Ionized air glow at the, at the leading, leading edge of the construct, which has become visible at night as SCP 2162 has moved away from artificial light sources, has provided further evidence of its shape. SCP-2162 moves at a constant rate of 
0.25 kilometers per hour traveling at a fixed direction along a particular longitude or latitude from June 25th, 2013, SV-2162 traveled south along the longitude 118.25 degrees west from the point of origin near Los Angeles, California. On August 24th, 2015, the construct reached latitude 8.65 degrees south and changed course turning 90, 90 degrees and traveling west along that latitude. All right, the addendum, well, which is not addendum, it's mainly a post-incident interview, SCP-2162-A, green, slash green, slash zero one. Interview, Agent Green. Interviewer, Assistant Director Griffiths, Head of Site-15 Disciplinary Committee. Uh-oh. Date, June 8, 28, 2013. Forward, incident. SCP-2162-A involved the initial discovery of the anomaly which developed in the area west of Los Angeles, California on June 25, 2013, and Essex was dispensed across the affected area in the event attributed to a gas leak from a nearby chemical plant. 758 civilian and 19 Foundation casualties are believed to have been resulted from the incident. Uh, A.D. Griffiths, thank you for your time, Agent Green. We're just trying to understand the part you played in resolving this incident. No problem, mind if I smoke? I guess not. Could you start by explaining why you were in Los Angeles when the incident occur occurred? Not to be difficult, but if I tell you, you'll just have to redact it all in the report. Can we say I was on the Foundation business related to SCP-2162 and leave it at that? Uh, yes, I believe so. Right. So our communications department requested that you leave your assignment and you drove towards Thousand Oaks. What were your first impressions? Frankly, it was chaos. PI-1 was still hours away and there were a few teams from Site-15 that had been scrambled, but no one there knew how to deal with, with an anomaly like this. No offense. It's just not your usual scene. None taken. From the initial observation point, it looked like the goddamn angel of death had touched down. Cars had run into ditches through houses and stores. We would see bodies had collapsed on the pavement, but no obvious injuries. They were just dead. It was eerie. There was no sign of what had caused it. No sight, no sound, no nothing. Just death. And once you arrived at the observation point, what did you do? I went up to the guy in charge to get some instructions. Carter. He was your head of security? Yes. I'm sorry he gathered everyone up, stood in front of us on the top of the rise. He told us that he, he they had the site corner, quartered off. Any civilians still alive have been evacuated. Said our job was ensured no one else went up to the area. Sit tight and wait for backup. Then he asked for any questions, and ten seconds later he collapsed. Unlucky bastard. He hadn't realized the skip was moving. What happened? And what happened then? Well, all hell broke loose. Carter was convulsing. A couple of security guards went over to help him, and some of the A class as well. The rest of the group started yelling and running in every direction. Some of them fell too. Me and a few of the others started backing away from where Carter had been. It was pretty bad. We had an idea where it had come from, but not where it was, or how fast it could move. According to your report, you and the remainder of Site-15 team returned to your vehicles and left the scene. We hold ass, yes. I ended up with one of your crew in my car, a young researcher. Dr. Shen, where, where did you drive to? South, south, away from the invisible wave of death, and towards the 12,000 citizens of Malibu, who had no clue what was coming up. We got comms and decided the vehicles would fan out and try to warn as many people as possible to cut roads off Get an ordinary evacuation going. PI-1 had a bird on the way to help. In which part of Malibu did you cover? You already know that I changed course. I just kept thinking about those guards clasping. I mean, it was like they all suffocated, but one of them was in a hazmat suit with SCBA tanks. And I started wondering, what if they weren't breathing it in? What if all the air in their lungs, all the air in their tanks was just gone? 
but it wasn't hunt hunting behavior. It was just constant arbitrary movement. It felt like, well, you don't hunt reality benders for as long as I have. The uh, sense of when an anomaly is man-made. That's why I drove to the warehouse. That is the hazardous material storage warehouse in Nor Norwalk. Right, Shen told me about it, but the time we were halfway there, PI-1 had managed to reestablish a perimeter, and they realized how slowly the thing was moving. We knew ha we had some time, but we needed some way to see it, and I had an idea how. Can you please elaborate? You see that smoke ring? You know that you do the same thing without a smoke, without the smoke, right? Please, Agent Green, for the benefit of the recording. Okay, then. Did you ever use invisible ink as a kid? No. You write in starch or lemon juice, and then it turns invisible. Then you wash the page with iodine. I had an invisible anomaly. And what I needed was the right type of wash. Shen was the one who came up with the nitrosyl chloride, which he knew would to be hazardous and commandeered without orders. Which was less hazardous than the visible killer gas. And anyway, there was no orders. Site 15 had no command left. And PI-1 were trying to convince half of Malibu to cancel their parties. The team leader thanked me afterwards. Not to mention, we, were probably, we probably gave them an idea of using Gas Leak as the cover story. Asian Green were trying to establish why you released thousands of liters of gas. A highly to toxic mucosal irritant near a major population center. Population center? It was a state park by then, and the gas dispersed pretty quickly. And it worked, right? Colored gas everywhere. The anomaly wasn't. Damn things showed up clear as day. The PI-1 bird could work out the dimensions to see how much of the Malibu would to evacuate. evacuate. Once they stopped laughing, of course. Funny that no one had thought that they would look like from above. I mean, Shen said the gas looked like it would, would be colored. He hadn't told me it was yellow. Kind of appropriate, don't you think? What I think is that we're done. Recording ends. Update. June 29, 2013. Agent Green was issued both a disciplinary caution and on a site director review. Accommodation for his actions during incident... SCB 2162-A. Over his objections, Agent Green was assigned to work with Agent Daniel Navarro to investigate the source of SCB 2162 and the possibility of anomalous artist movement. And that's it. That's the anomaly. Invisible killer gas. No. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I I'll, I'm gonna admit I did not hear the SVP because a good portion of the time you were reading it, I was a, I was kind of fluked and spooked returning home. It's basically invisible killer gas that goes at zero point twenty five kilometers per hour, and it hit Los Angeles. No. They don't know why it went there. They have no idea why it went there. But apparently people would just drop dead instantly when the gas hit. Do, do they know how to stop it? I mean, they used... Uh, hold on, let me find it. Nitrosyl chloride in order to see it and they're do, able to do a perimeter before it started moving again i feel like that's not the same as stopping it that's just trapping it well no, that's not even trapping it that's just like that's just like finding ways to get people out of the way i wouldn't call that trapping it Yeah. So yeah, that that's a thing. Invisible killer gas. That we have no way to stop. The only good thing is it moves zero point twenty five kilometers per hour, so it's not 
super fast. And it also tends to stay in a set longitude or latitude. So long, as long as the foundation sees where it's going, then everything's fine. They have no idea what's controlling this or why it's doing it, though. I feel like it's county level danger because it mm -hmm. has a set longitude and latitude. Mm -hmm. It has a direction it's going. It's not just going everywhere and anywhere. Uh, you mean country? Oh, country. Sorry, I thought that was county. No. <laughs> yeah. I agree with it there. I mean, it did show that it will it'll randomly change, but it'll, it'll also stay on that set longitude or latitude when it does change. It's not like it goes sporadic. Yeah. It'll still stay on that latitude or longitude for a while, then it'll change again. So the Foundation just has to keep watch on this SCP, basically. Which is kind of hard when it's in a visible gas. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, it's, it's invisible gas of pure nitrogen. Just 100% nitrogen gas. Jerry, I don't think you heard that. I had not. <laughs> oh. Well, speaking of California, the next SCP is 2163, also known as Hollywood. Oh, the death trap, I mean, Hollywood. <laughs> uh. <gasps> SCP-2163 is the North American film industry commonly referred to, to with the metonym Hollywood, where such of the industry was tr traditionally been located. SCP-2163 is one of the largest sources of cognito hazards, generating more than 300 cognito hazards a year. These cognito hazards are largely generated unintentionally arising accidentally, during the course of a normal film production. These cognito hazards are uh, very remark remarkably in form and effect, but there are several traits that are shared by many of them. Namely, all cognito hazards produced by SCP-2163 are communicable, although to varying degrees. Visual cognito hazards often contain rapid changes in brightness, contrast, and color, most are short sequences of film, less than five seconds long. Few, very few are are still images. Auditory cognitive hazards rarely contain human speech. Most are short, repetitive pieces of music containing string instruments, or and or synthesized sounds. Those that do not contain human speech are usually behavior altering in their in their effects. Info hazards are are uncommon. When they do appear, they are often lines of dialogue, monologue, or narration. These are the hardest to detect automatically, and often the most dangerous. Okay, so we gotta stop watching Morgan Freeman films. <laughs> Jokes aside, uh, research into safe means of neutralizing SV-2163 is ongoing. Currently, it is impossible to do so without causing a mass cultural shift. This has been deemed an acceptable consequence if slash when the rate of cognitive hazard generation surpasses the rate of detection by more than 12%. Addendum 2163 1. The documentation for SV 2163 1995 201 
SCP-2163-2005-058, and SCP-2163-2013-166 is included below. Together, they are considered representative of the cognito hazards generated by SCP-2163. Access to the documentation for other SCP-2163 cognito hazards may be limited by clearance level. Alright, so 1995-201, Object Class Safe, Special Containment Procedures, SCP-2163-1995-201, is contained using standard containment procedures for generic safe class communicable cognito hazards. Description, 1995-201 is a sequence of 60 frames of, of film from the film Toy Story. The cognito hazard is located in the upper right corner of the screen and consists of a series of rapid changes in color and brightness caused by the gesturing of one of the characters. When viewed, this cognito hazard causes the viewers to believe that they are, sen there are sentient children's toys. Persons affected by this delusion will cease all voluntary muscle movement when the presence of, a, of an unaffected person. During production, several members of the film's animation team were affected by 1995-201 before it could be recovered by Foundation agents. These individuals were successfully treated with amnestics. Unaffected members of the production crew were dosed with amnestics for, were necessary to preserve secrecy. Two, uh, item 2005-058 Object Class Safe Euclid Sub Entities Special Containment Procedures SP but uh, wait, 2005-058 is contained using standard containment procedures for generic safe class communicable cognitive hazards. Individuals affected by 2005-058 are to be contained in standard humanoid containment cells following the guidelines for containment of non-anomalous humans. 2005-058 is the entire initial narration track of the English version of the documentary March of the Penguins. Listening to the track triggers a strong migratory instinct amongst human listeners. Affected individuals have all expressed a desire to travel towards the nearest geographic pole. If prevented from doing so, these individuals become increasingly hostile towards their detainers, often resorting to violence in an attempt to escape. Anesthetic treatments have so far met with no success, requiring with indefinite containment of infected individuals. Uh, 2005-058 was covered by Foundation agents before it was released. Individuals involved in the production of the film were dosed with amnestics and a new narration track was reported. Following state protocols for the containment of semi-notable persons, individuals affected by 2005-058 have been retro retroactively removed from public records where possible and replaced where not. Item 2013-166 Object class neutralized. Special containment procedures in slash A. Description 2013-166 is entirely entirety of the documenta documentary Blackfish. The film is a delayed response cognitive hazard that causes affected individuals to develop, to develop a hatred of the taste of fish. If left untreated, infected individuals will cease all consumption of fish and fish flavored items. It will begin a vigorously encourage others to do so as well. 2013-166 avoid detection by both Foundation and GOC monitoring systems, resulting in its public release and dis dissemination. Once its existence was discovered, a joint Foundation slash GOC research group was formed to develop an articulation meme in order to prevent the collapse of the world fishing industry. This meme was then distributed via advertisements for foundation front companies, a mass immunization campaign, codename Operation Fish Food, it was undertaken to treat those already affected by 2013-166. This campaign is considered a success despite the redacted USD and lost profits that occurred before its conclusion. Uh, before its conclusion, in the wake of these events, watchdogs detection algorithms. Have been modified in such a way as to reduce the chances of a similar event reoccurring. The exact nature of those modifications are restricted to clearance 
level 3 watchdog or above. And that's it. So, so far isn't shown a super dangerous one. But like the, the Toy Story one where people thought they were sentient toys and they stopped moving when people were around. That's concerning. As well as for the people who who can't be cured is another concerning thing. Hey, what? Yeah, that was one of the things that said like they thought they were sentient toys to cease movement when people were around. Oh. Yeah, persons affected by the solution will cease all voluntary muscle movement when in the presence of an unaffected persons. And so the people who worked on this were from the original Toy Story. Yeah. Huh, <laughs> but fish are not friends. Uh, fish are friends, not food. <laughs> nice book. But yeah, this SCP could actually be dangerous. Because like the, dangerous. well, for one thing, no, um, how much the danger? How much would you estimate the danger? The reason why I would estimate the danger, because say uh i'm not saying why i'm saying how much i don't know i'm just uh i would say good amount of danger because like the fishing industry was almost destroyed by this anomaly the foundation had to literally waste a lot of redacted money along with the goc to undo the problem. Actually, it wouldn't be an issue if the fishing industry totally vanished. Right. What I'm saying is, because of that, what if it was to attack uh, an office industry? Offices wouldn't be like um, or, yeah. or one, one office is as important as the fishing industry, first of all. Okay, no, I, I'm sorry. What if it attacked the hospital industry? Hospitals. Like, say, going to the hospital is bad, and people started believing that from the anomaly. That would be pretty yeah, bad. Anti-vaxxers doing that. Maybe, maybe the Hollywood thing started it. Yeah, that's another thing. With anti-vaxxers. What if it started that? Like, yeah, like, this can be dangerous yeah, in certain circumstances. Group. Yeah, a certain group. Group. Yeah. In certain circumstances, this could be could really be, bad and dangerous. It could be, it could be world changing, but it could also be certain groups. I'm going to put it in certain groups for now because it only seems to affect certain people who see that footage. But, like, if it spreads like wildfire, that's really fucking bad. We're getting, like, this stream has been getting into the super fucking dangerous SCPs. Yeah. Sorry for the sarcasm. Kind of. <laughs> also, I have no idea if this picture is actually uh, a part of this SCP, so don't get mad at me. <laughs> Like I already stated with the Google thing, but uh, there. It's uh, let me double check the number. Yep, twenty one sixty eight. Uh, also known as progress. There. Yeah, that's where I was thinking Spoot here just gets spoot all the cunning of hazard power of Hollywood. <laughs> or if Spoot heard that. I think Spoot is just facing off. They had a long day. That's fair. Anyway. SCP-2168 is a phenomenon occurring in rural towns in the 
your Oregonian countryside. Areas affected by SCP-2168 will be subjected to a series of anomalous... Huh? What was that, Adorno? So, the... So, Uruguay is... Uruguay... Ha, shit. You got me mispronouncing the shit now. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm gonna make sure I get this right. Yeah. Anyways, uh, to their infrastructure and population happening through two stages. During stage one, populations living in the areas under SCP 2168's effects will feel a gradually increasing urge to abandon their homes during a seemingly arbitrary period of time. Once the pe this period has passed, regardless of the number of inhabitants left the air in the area, human built infrastructure and objects in the area will start to spontaneously collapse. At the same time, the remains will rearrange into a structure reminiscent of a skyscraper, always located in the geographical center of the affected town, since the dismantling these structures has been unsuccessful. Humans who stayed in the area once the structure's construction starts will invariably go missing. The structure will continue growing in height until all surrounding buildings have been completely destroyed. At this point, the instance will enter into stage 2 when several entities, the exact number being depending on the structure's size, start to appear inside the skyscraper. These beings hereby, oh, I don't know left, uh, hereby designated SCP-2168-A are sapient, pale, genetically identical humanoids of unspecific sex and gender. Instances of the, oh, what was that? The, 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 um, oh, the, 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 the country is called Uruguay. 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 Got it. Anyway. So. Yeah. Instances of SP 2168-A are extremely docile and display no threat to the personnel complying with any order given. Observation in situ of SCP 2168-A has revealed that the entities follow a strict daily routine, spending an average of 10 hours per day sitting near a desk. They perform a seemingly meaningless task such as reading from blank sheets of papers, connecting, and disconnecting USB devices and pressing random buttons on a disconnected keyboard. Alright. Addendum 2168-2 On February 4th, 2001, 2 a.m. 3-3 GMT, a squad of Foundation operatives operatives were deployed to explore the location affected by SCP-2168-7. Exploration of the surroundings of the structure revealed that natural resources, including bodies of water, wild animals, vegetation, and the infected area were depleting. At this point, operatives were ordered to enter the main building. Operatives crossed the main entrance into the structure without inconvenience and proceeded to explore the building. The structure was discovered to contain only a few rooms inhabited by instances of SCP-2168-A, while several hundreds of other rooms were empty of occupants. All rooms displayed the exact minimal organization and furniture containing a bed for one person, a single plastic desk with a single plastic chair, standard bathroom equipment, a prismatic structure resembling a modern refrigerator with several pipes emerging from behind. In order to find out more about these entities, Foundation operatives were asked to take a single instance under custody for studying and interviewing purposes. Interview 2168-A01, date February 4, 2001. Interviewer Dr. Daniel Adams, interviewee SCP-2168-A-1076. Forward SCP 2168 A 17th instance of SCP 2168 A discovered in the area of SCP 2168 7. 
was taken to a nearby Foundation's facility two kilometers west of the affected area. The entity displayed no resistance and followed ruling. Dr. Adams, good morning. Please state your name for the record. Uh, uh, name? I, um, I don't know. You don't have a name? I, I, well, if by n name you mean how people call me, I guess no. I don't have one. Um, I see. Well then. Wait, uh, uh, sorry, but the director calls me a uh, peon. Is, is that fine with you? Because if it's if it is not, yes, it's all right. Very well, Mr. Peon. My name is Dr. Adams. Nice to meet you. I would like you to answer some questions regarding your residence. My uh, my cubicle. There's not much to say actually. I sleep there and eat there and work there. I live a simple and productive life. Right. Actually, we are more interested in hearing how you came to the skyscraper you live in. Skyscraper? Like those huge buildings? The, 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 the ones that almost scrapes the skies? Yes. You were saying you never knew you were there? I, I knew where I was. I was inside my cubicle, working, being productive. I wonder if my ship is about to start. Your job, yes. Could you explain to me what it implies? Uh, of course, my job. I am productive. I sit at my desk and think of ways to be productive, more efficient. I check how much energy and food I consume and see how much I can reduce it. I see. How do you achieve this, may I ask? Oh, through a lot of ways. Uh, like eating less, using less electricity. Oh, and I thought a very good reason, yet yeah, very good one yesterday. Listen, listen, ready? I sleep a few hours as possible so the bed never breaks. Am I smart or what? Heh. End of the first audio log. Sorry. Sorry. It's five. Interview 2168-A-02. Date June 5th, 2001. Interviewer Dr. Adams. Interviewee SCP-2168-A-176. Forward. Second recorded interview with SCP-2168-A-176. Dr. Adams was asked to gather as much information as possible about the supposed entity SCP-2168-A-176 designated as the director in a previous interview. Dr. Uh, Adams. Hello, Mr. Peon. How are you feeling today? Hi, doctor. Well, very well, actually. The, the food tasted weird. Delicious, but weird. And the room you gave me is very nice too, though it feels strange not having a director to talk with me. I am glad. Now, as we were talking about this director, could you please tell me about them? The, the, the director? Sure, he is my friend. He is everyone's friend. He is the bond between chemicals, between all the workers of the company. He is everywhere. He feeds us and keeps us safe, and we are productive in exchange. So he's in control of skyscrapers facilities. Uh, I, I guess so. I haven't seen anyone else until you appeared. But the director says there are other employees, so I uh, I can't tell for sure. I understand. How do you communicate with the director? I, he talks to me through the walls because he is everywhere, you know, looking after us, complimenting us. And we do a good work punishing us when we do not. Punishing you? Uh, yes, he does that from time to time. Cutting our food and water supplies, for example. He always says that it is to compensate for what we have not produced, so I have no problem with it at all. Really? I see. Do you know anything else about him? Uh, I, I, I do, don't know. Never said anything about himself. Mr. Peon, please, if you do know something, we would be very grateful if you told us. If, would you raise me if, if I told you? I can make no promises. That depends entirely on what the medical tests are, results are finished. I can, I can They'll tell you that once they are done, we will return you to your cubicle. Uh, okay. He he once said he was the most important thing that the building has. It's root and gardener, and what it feed it. I know no clue what he meant, though. Oh, goodness. I am not supposed to talk about this. Thank you for your, your cooperation, Mr. Peon. Interview... 2168-A-03 Oh wait I read the dates wrong It's not 
it's not American right of calendar, it's the other way. Okay, so May 6, 2001. Oh, wait, no, wait. I read the wrong one. May, May 20th, 2001. Interviewer Dr. Daniel Adams, interviewee SCP 2168 A 176. Forward interviewer, interview inquest, requested by SCP 2168 A 176. Request approved unanimously by research team. Dr. Adams, did you wish to talk with me, Mr. Peon? Yes, I, I demand to go home. Excuse me? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have been here t for too long. I, I have I have to go to work, so p please let me go. Oh, don't worry about that. I am s sorry the testing has taken longer than we thought, but I can assure... Sh shut up! I am tired of your lies. I, I have to go home. Director needs me. The company needs me. My co-workers need me. You said you didn't know your co-workers. That, that doesn't matter at all. I know that they're out there and that they need me as much as I need them. We are a company, a family, a community. We need each other, and you are a, a, a bad person for not allowing me to be there with them. SB 2168-A-176 becomes visibly distressed, covering his, its face with his hands while its body shakes erratically. Mr. Peon. He is calling me. He is right here, but so far away. The progress needs everyone. The progress needs everyone. The progress needs everyone. SCB 2168-A-176 jumps suddenly toward Director Adams and starts shaking him by his shoulders. Get away, security! End law. Closing statements. SCP 2168 A 76 was taken out of the interview room by a security guard and was put in a Tape C Sapient Entity containment room. SCP 2168 A 176 was found dead in its room the following morning with heavy damage to its forehead and knuckles. Bruce displayed blood stains on its eastern wall, so that. Uh, uh, in the wall, Dr. Adams was uninjured, but reported minor physical distress and required consulate afterwards. Proposal to limit all further interactions with instances of SCP-2168-A to, -A to areas affected by SCP-2168 in order to avoid further instance is being approval. And that's it. It's literally just... A business taking over a, a part of the country, basically. It, like Bookworm says, colonization. <laughs> Director did not prove of his day off. Oh, God. So... What's everyone thinking about this? I think my brain has died for the night and I can't hear anymore. Okay, that's fine. Um. I'm, I'm personally favor with the fuck, but. Yeah. At least it's not killing the residents. Well, if they stay, they, they don't go missing. If they leave, they don't die. So it's not like it's actively killing, it's just taking people's homes away from them. Basic colonization. Hmm. Like what comes said. I, I I'd say what the fuck, but also it could also fit in like Yeah, it's what the fuck. Yeah. That, that that really should have just a picture of fucking like, um. That, that really should have a picture of fucking like Columbus or some shit instead of that. Yeah. Well, at least this next SCP picture actually fits with it. Next SCP. Columbus was more murdery and also more. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. The next SCP is SCP-2189, Clockwork Fruit. SCP-2189 is a collective designation for three items superficially resembling specimens of Malus domestica, aka an, an apple tree, designated SCP-2189-T-1, Vitis vinifera, aka a common grapevine, designated SCP-2189-T-2, and Musca acuminata, aka a banana plant, designated scp 21 89-T-3, as well as their associated fruit. The bark at epidermis and peels of SCP-2189 instances are indistinguishable from that of their non-anomalous counterparts, including genetically. However, in place of their of, of the expected internal structures are an inter intricate network of gears, springs, cams, and cranks. Removed components are indistinguishable from anomalous metals, mostly brass. When its internal mechanisms are functioning, instances of SP 2189 T respond to their environment similarly to their biological counterparts, except that they are always in growing season, and parts do not naturally senesce. Leaves never change color and fall off, bark never sloughs off, and instances of SCP 21 89-F remain atta attached indefinitely and do not become overripe. SCP-2189-T instances have the same needs as their non-anomalous counterparts in terms of water, sunlight, and soil type. When deprived of these, it, the instances' internal mechanisms begin to slow, eventually stopping altogether under circumstances corresponding to severe net nutrition. If appropriate, exposure to sunlight, water, and soil are resumed. The instance resumes functioning. The internal mechanism of an SCP-2189-F instance will cease functioning if it is picked before ripe or it has been separated from the corresponding SCP-2189-T instance for about, about the same amount of time it would take its biological counterpart to spoil. Functioning instances of SCP-2189-F can be eaten and digested. Searches report that the flavor and texture of the full, typical of the type of fruit corresponding to the instance whose stripping from SCP-2189-F instances being consumed are identical to non-anomalous counterparts. Mechanisms that are bitten through will continue their natural movement, with portions of the mechanism moving from the main mass to be bitten off the piece and back again. As if the mechanism were still intact. The spatial anomaly appears to continue on an increasingly small scale as SP 2189 F pieces are further broken down in the mouth and digestive tract. If the peel of an SP 2189 F instance is removed, the mechanical interior will continue to function. However, if anything other than the animal mouth parts penetrates deeper than the peel of and SCP-2189-F instance, the internal mechanisms that the instance will jam. Once this occurs, all portions of the instance will cease to function as fruit. Mechanisms will no longer be bitten through. The bites already taken will become in indigestible. Consequent autopsies of animal and D-class test subjects identified other gas gastrointestinal trauma or copper toxicity as the cause of death, depending on the stage of digestion. Oh. Let's see. Then number one. One of the earliest test subjects of SCP-2189, D-51259, was subsequently assigned to be redacted for SCP redacted, and consequently had her termination deferred by three months when SCP redacted tended to remove redacted d 51259 was given a detailed autopsy with biopsies of all tissues. This unusually thorough postmortem analysis was standard practice for all D class who had been used to test SCP 2189. And the directive remained in SCP 
and remain in D-5125 as personal file, despite the fact that the active testing of SP-2189 have been concluded. Microscopic brass gears were discovered in some samples of SP-2129's uh, SP adipose and lymphatic tissue, and her liver was found to contain a cluster of five interlocked gears, ranging in diameter from 0.1 to 0.4 millimeters, the largest of which was attached to a 0.3 millimeter long camshaft. These structures were not found in d class personnel who died during or shortly after testing of SB 2189. Testing of SB 2189 presumed and a proposal to reclassify as Euclid is currently being drafted by the research team. Addendum 2. So, sequent to SCP 2189's classification, field agents Dietrich and Harris conducted a few uh, a review of public and police records to identify deaths and missing persons cases potentially linked to SB 2189. A flag for investigation the disappearance of Redacted, a retired aerospace engineer who lived in a cabin several miles from Redacted State Forest, where SCB 2189 was discovered. Upon entering Redacted's home, the agents discovered that over three dozen clocks and watches, all of those that retain legible manufacturer markings for were later identified as being a purely mechanical design without much components. Approximately two dozens of the timepieces were found with their outer components in a state of extreme corrosion consistent with, with their apparent date of ma manufacture and conditions of storage. I mean, in these instances lacked internal components and were covered in mold. Fourteen instances were found in redacted deep freeze these instances that had uncorroded exteriors and contained a multicolored biological material later identified as a patchwork of various tissues found in Malostomisca, vitreous spinifera, and U.S. Musa accumulata. These instances were found to be keeping accurate time despite their lack of internal mechanisms. Agents were also confiscated numerous handwriting notebooks containing diagrams and erased symbols analysis of notebooks had been hindered by mold damage. But the legible portion of the text includes common equations from mechanical engineering with unidentified symbols inserted in place of various constants. The timepiece has been designated SCB-2189-C and redacted has been designated Person of Interest 2189-1. Then number three, agents Dietrich and Harris interviewed several of people's persons of interest, 2189-1 superiors and co-workers at Redacted Aeronautics, where he was employed for 32 years. Person of interest, 2189-1, appears to have been socially isolated and regarded as increasingly eccentric during the final years of his employment. He was reportedly pushed into retirement when he began talking openly about the engineering applications of various occult practices, most frequently sacred geometry and ge geography. H has also interviewed the individual who initially reported point of interest 4189-1 missing, his nephew, and next of kin redacted, claims to have been the only visitor of POI 2189-1 Kevin after POI 2189-1 retired there and that POI 2189-1 spent the past several years constructing an elaborate retraction covered in drawings. Redactus states that he actively avoided discussion of P POI 2189-1's cult interests and is unable to provide useful details about the alleged apparatus or POI 2189-1's activities during this time, other than that POI-2189-1 claims several times to have selected the location of the cabin for reasons of sacred geometry and geography. Researchers conducted a thorough geological survey 
of the property subterran mapping of the area was hampered when standard GPR was unable to produce a clear output. A redacted system was employed, which identified a metallic sphere, approximately redacted meters in diameter, buried at a depth of zero meters, and contained a curved shaft of a much larger object at the limit of the redacted's range. Probing of the surrounding region was conducted under the cover of the study of the U.S. Geological Survey, and a center mass was found to be connected to similar spheres as far away as redacted, ranging in diameter from redacted meters to zero point redacted kilometers. The overall structure of the Nash object resembles a array buried in a vertical orientation, roughly along the line of latitude at redacted. A mineral exploration the drilling rig and with diamond drill bits successfully penetrated the sphere closest to the surface and extracted a core sample. The interior layers consisted of tissues found in des desperate human body parts, including layers made of heart mu muscle tendons and neurons. The outer shell was found to be brass, and the structure had been designated SCP 2189 X. Surveillance of redacted produced the following recovered voicemail received redacted and deleted the same day apparently left by POI 2189 1 in the state of inauguration. It works, Johnny Boy. It works. Every part of it works. I, I did as tough a test as I could think of short of the real thing. Complex system, groups of, you know, the groups of complex system. Systems, one of the earth and one clean of mechan and mechanical, matching the function versus structure, and it fell into place like clockwork. Perfectly engineered. Smooth and perfect. You do the right things, and the right things will happen. You can't laugh at the rules of the universe like some political mental manager bullshitter and expect to get away with it. It is not a theory. It is not hoodoo. It's... Sacred geometry and geography. <laughs> I wish you were here to see it. Oh, I know you think I'm crazy too, Johnny Boy, but you've been the only one to stand by me, and I want you to know that in the world to come, you and Sherry will be protected. You'll sit but at my right hand. The sleeping king will never wake up, Johnny Boy. I will. Further invasive testing of SCP-2189-X was prohibited, and SCP-2189 upgraded to Keter by order of the O5 redacted. I don't need to tell you that we caught with our pants down on this one, or that we might as well have remained in the dark for far longer if an accidental discovery hadn't forced you to take a look at SCP-2189. The simple step of assigning agents to investigate the SCP's origins at the time of containment could have been a real game changer. Instead, SB-2189 spent critical months misclassified as safe, with no one looking into it, because no one in Site-103's chain of command, not your project head, not your director of research, and not you, thought it might be worthwhile to study the long-term effects of eating an SCP. That kind of inaccurate attitude and the exact opposite of what we pay researchers for, and you're claiming that you couldn't assign Investigative resources until SB-2189 was reclassified as Euclid won't fly. You have a discretionary budget for precisely this reason. We still don't know what, what Redacted did, whether he got what he wanted, or for that matter, whether the effects of this little dress reversal are still working their way up the food chain and Redacted and your own site's greenhouses. What we do know for certain is that we gave him a three-month head start. In light of these events, I have decided your talents will be better utilized elsewhere in the organization. You are relieved of your duties as site director effective immediately. 05 redacted. And that's it. Okay, so the 05 got pretty pissed off. Which doesn't get good, put this SP in a green light. This is the first time I've heard of the O5 getting angry. Yeah.
And if O5 gets angry, that's not a good sign. Where to put this? Because apparently people who eventually do eat it, once it comes a part of it, it'll eventually come met, uh, be metal or something like that. And they'll die from gastrointestinal trauma or copper toxic toxicity. So, you'll eventually die after eating it. And it seems to spread. Because like I said, it was already infected in SCP greenhouses, which is not good. Hmm. I'm thinking only certain groups, mainly because you have to actually eat it to die. Like, if it's just sitting there, it's not going to hurt you. What's everyone else thinking? My brain is off. I'll get thumbs up. Alright. Uh, Aderna? Oh. Bookworm? Uh, Bookworm also says another good point. We don't know the full extent of his plans, only the part regarding the trees. Sounds like Bookworm's agreeing with you. Yeah. I guess we'll just put in certain groups because I think yeah, the Derners. Uh, huh? What was that, Adurna? Certain group work. Certain group work. Yeah. All right. Oh. I actually think Adurna might like this next one. It is called SCP-2191, Dracula Factory. SCP-2191 is a temple complex located within the dense uh, Hoya Forest of Romania. The first two floors of the structure hold a close resemblance to Eastern Orthodox monasteries commonly found in the region. This is suspected to have been a deliberate effort to disguise the true nature of SCP-2191. The Thracian and Dacian architecture have both been discovered in the lower levels of the Temple complex and artifacts belonging to the uh, uh, Kusiteni uh, Tripilian culture have, have been recovered from this system of tunnels that makes up the lowest known portion of SCP-2191. The caverns of SCP-2191 are not thought to have formed naturally and were con likely constructed uh, 4,800 to uh, 3,000. BC SCP-2191 is inhabited by a population of organisms classified as SCP-2191-1. Instances of SCP-2191-1 are considered genetically human but have undergone several significant seemingly fatal mutations. SCP-2191-1 like all major internal organs with the exception of, of the lungs, heart, and brain stem. The outer epidermis lacks pigmentation and displays a condition resembling bracked porcelain. 
possibly related to a Harley Quinn syndrome. Entities appeared and drawn drawness lacking or having somehow removed secondary sex char char characteristics. They regressed eye the regressed eyes are covered by a layer of skin, rendering them mostly blind but still able to re react to light. Further deviations from baseline Homo sapiens include especially flat upturned noses and funnel shaped ears, both considered related to dependency on oil olfactory and auditory perception. SCP-2191-1 do not appear to communicate via language. The only sound produced by uh, was being a persistent clicking of the tongue, speculated to be a form of echolocation. SCP-2191-1 do not readily appear to undergo sustenance and have not aged since containment. Further analysis have revealed an abnormally slow metabolism. SCP-2191-1 instances are not believed to be biologically immortal, but have a significantly decreased rate of necrosis. SCP-21-2 refers to a collective of vermiform organisms. These organisms vary in size, form, and purpose. They are currently classified as 2191-2-2A, 2B, and 2C. Genetic analysis of that dash two show analysis show close relation to the fellow subgroups of their most recent common ancestors being Homo sapiens. It has been speculated that dash two did not naturally evolve on their own on their own, but their true origin remains unknown. Two A superficially resembled uh, Petro. By form formes, or also known as lamprey, but whose internal structure most closely resembled Herodinia, or also known as leeches. Each SCP-2191-1 has has a two to a instance within their abdomen, primarily located where the stomach and large and large slash small intestines would would exist. 2B are an infestation of vermiform organisms that live throughout the hollow walls of SCP-2191. SCP-2191 appears to have been obstructed with a system of channels through which SCP-2191, that, that which 2B travel. These thin, long organisms will enter SCP-2191-1 orifices, but do not appear to cause harm or discomfort to their host. 2B are believed to be redistribute nutrients throughout SP-2191, extracted from any 2191-1 which have already fed. 2C, like 2B, inhabited the interior architecture of SP-2191. These tendril-like appendages are composed primarily of neurons and attached to 2191-1. At the base of the spine while inactive. Only when attached to attached to, to C do 2191-1 display behavior resembling that of a sapient organism. 2191-1 are considered inactive while connected to, to C. During an active state, 2191-1 entities will leave SCP-2191 and aggressively hunt for living humans. Ignoring non-humans, human animals, and deceased individuals, active states do not occur simultaneously among SCP-2191-1. Nor do they hunt as a pack, choosing to spread throughout the forest. A paralytic agent is employed to disable their prey, injected via venom, delivering bars located in their lower carpals of both hands. When prey have been successfully incapacitated, S. 2191-1 will open its mouth and widen its throat, and hinging its jaw in the process. 2A will then emerge from 2191-1's interior cavity, initiating a uh, feeding process by lashing to the victim's neck via a tooth funnel-like sucking mouth. 2A will first inject the body with, with digestive enzymes, liquidizing organ, muscle, and bone 
alike before consuming the resultant fluids. The process can last anywhere from 20 to 50 minutes, depending on the size of its prey. Although to those living in the vicinity of Hawaii Force, SCP-2191 is not was not recognized by the Foundation as an anomaly until August 1916 after the unexplained disappearance of 244 members of the Austro-Hungarian First Army during the Battle of Transylvania. Due to the First World War, operations to contain the threat did not begin until early 1919. Without a source of food, SCP-2191-1 entities appeared to enter a dormant state as of December 1924. Several instances, incidents occurring between 1932 and 1977 were the result and discovery of SCP-2191-3. Oh, cheery left. Right. SCP-2193-3 is an organism whose core is located deep beneath SCP-2191. Its true size was has proven difficult not entirely impossible to measure, but the root-like appendages extend throughout an area of largely 660,000 square kilometers. SCP-2191-3 secretes a highly corrosive substance which is employed in the creation of tunnels throughout the Balkan Peninsula. SCP-2191-3 is sapient and ex exerts control over 2191-1 and 2191-2 organisms be a visible interaction with 2C and through the, the release of complex pheromones. 2191-1 entities act as feeder drones for 2191-3. It, it has since been discovered that civilians native to several isolated villages in the vicinity of Hawaii Forest have actively provided human sacrifices to SCP-2191 as a means of minimizing seismic activity. Statement from the O5 Council. There are some who wish to believe that the Foundation has never nor will ever cater to the designs and desires of the anomalous entity. Foundation efforts to contain SB2191 are now thought to have inadvertently led to the deaths of approximately 40,000 people over 45 years. The obvious choice would be to neutralize the threat, and we've tried. The number of civilian and foundation casualties have been well beyond acceptable numbers. In order to contain a larger threat, we must allow it to feed. We are aware of the offense caused by this procedure. This is not the first time, nor will it be the last, that the foundation has, has been forced to commit a lesser evil in prevention of a greater. We do believe that, in the end, our current method is the most preferable with regards to both ethics and efficiency. We are fully aware that every sacrifice feeds SCP-2191-3, allowing it to and its root to thrive. But we do not, but we are not about to sacrifice the entire Balkan Peninsula to neutralize that threat. Not yet. And that's the end of the SCP. I like how they say that it won't wipe out the entire Balkan Peninsula, but in one joke SCP, they wiped out Almost all of Japan. <laughs> Alright. And yes, that picture I sent in... And, uh, stream chat was found in the article. So, I mean, they reduce it by feeding it, but at the same time, it's killed a lot of people. Seeing how it's affected, in, I would have to say city at least. Because the foundation is keeping it from attacking the entire peninsula so it's down all the way down near the forest and in the village around it so i would i would probably say city 
Germany or potentially country if it could. Yeah. If, but since they're feeding it, I don't think it's going to get worse. Still, probably certain groups, maybe content or country, if you don't let it feed. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking more along the lines of city. Just just city, just just be safe. Yeah. That was. My arms are hurting. <laughs> well, don't stop hurting your arms. Well, it's not hurting; they're just burning. Oh. oh. Poor mallet hurts your hand. <laughs> I just saw a picture of the next SCP. Um. I think I'll make this the last SCP tonight because of how the string kept crashing and everything. This will be the last one for tonight. Um, yeah, it's called SCP-2193, Monthly Termination. Alright, SCP-2193-1 is an info-hazard, hazardous anomaly, affecting the documentation for items and entities in the Foundation database. It often appears in the object's special containment procedures, or addenda, and references an operation referred to as the monthly termination of Class D personnel. No evidence for its initial adoption or implementation of such a policy exists, and any Foundation records as verified by a RISA investigation into all, all prior O5 administrator mandates and SDECOTW resolutions. SV2193 1 is an automatically inserted into random digital SCP slot and irregular intervals. The method by which it is generated is unknown. Individuals who are exposed to SB2193-1 are subjected to a mimetic effect wherein they fully believe monthly termination of Class D personnel to be a valid Foundation operation. This belief can be easily spread through any and all forms of communication solely by containing the phrase monthly termination. I want to go log off new information. Uh, what is it? How is it? Uh, put on this. Let's see where I'm in operation. Smith can easily be spread. Uh, read that part. Unaffected personnel that, off, that possess doubt or suspicion are able to overcome the simple rhetoric supporting the policy. The affected continue to operate. As if SB 2193 has always been a foundation of policy, and there is noted lack of cognitive dissonance for when presented, presented with conflicting information. Aside from the excessive expenditure of Class C personnel, sites and individuals infected are able to perform their duties exceptionally and without undue complications. The first known document to host SB 2193. Dash one SCP redacted had been removed from the database and is undergoing review from the Foundation Interceptional Division. No internal documentation or instructions exist that detail the actual termination process. Regardless, infected individuals and departments operate and terminate Class C personnel in a uniform manner. Remote observation of sites redacted and redacted, as well as security footage from affected sites prior to SCP. SB 2193's discovery have revealed the monthly termination process. 
On the final day of the month, testing is suspended on any SCPs which would involve Class D testing. Approximately one third of the site's resident Class D population will stand facing their cell doors. A sufficient detachment of security personnel will retrieve, uh, will arrive to escort Class D to a single file line throughout the facility. Though the guards will be armed with no, no restraints are placed on class on the Class D. Researchers level zero and other personnel not directly involved in the process will avoid the path officers slash class D follow. This is perfectly choreographed despite the lack of planning and forewarning. The class C will be led to a point outside the facility and taken to an area that is not covered by surveillance systems. Subdermal tracking implants of the class C cease function. Security guards return to the facility. Officers will claim to have terminated Class D via their side arms. Recovery. SCP-2193 was discovered on October 31st, 1994 by AIAD Project Corinthian, aka Glacom. Although its initial upload to Site-17, the site was undergoing an SCP-2193 event which the AI observed through this family system and attempted to contact the site director, J. Redacted, as the AI intercepted the procedure as illogical and without precedent. Its communications were disregarded. The AI correctly deduced the presence of a mimetic effect. It began the press, press process of removing SCP-2193-1 through the site's backup digital files, as well as every entry of the main database accessible by Site-17 personnel, they completed the process before the Class D had been removed from their cells and, dis and disabled the door's electronic locks. Dietrich M. Lark was contacted by Site 7 Security Chief, who requested his assistance in disabling the AI system override. D. Lark investigated the situation and finding the AI to, to be acted acting in accordance with standard principles, instead alerted MTF 10 also known as See No Evil. Site 17, al along with 12 other sites, had to be quarantined and their corresponding records wiped off SP 2193 1. Provisional site redacted, observational site redacted were exempted for testing purposes. In the addendum, forward on January 31st, 1999, at 1 provisional site redacted underwent an SP 2193 event during a transport of Class D behavior. Hero changes were noted in both in the detainees and the guards. Class C repeated, expressed concern over their fate, while the guards apologized profusely. The following is an excerpt taken from Agent Yusun's head cam as the event reached its conclusion. 159.23 The group approaches a rounded clearing in the woods two kilometers south of the site. 201.46 Class C continued directly towards the clearing center. The guards branch out and form a ring around the group. This formation is progress with the previous observations. 204.32 The guards around the Class C perimeter turn away from the group and obscured their head cams, excluding Agent Usun. Agent Usun. In the circle during to sudden interference, presumably not again. 205.32 05, D-1921 lifts vertically, hovering in place, 0.30 meters off the ground. 20509, D-1920 continues upward at an estimated speed, 35 kilometers per hour. D-1923 begins to hover. 205, 12 to 20658. This process repeats for every present. Class D, they are taken individually. 206.58, Agent Usons watches the final Class D depart and fixates on the full moon. 207.33, the moon appears to blink. 207.35, Agent Usons begins to run in the background. The other guards be can be seen remaining in their position. 207.39, Agent Usons is lifted into in a manner similar to the Class D. 20741 camera feed cuts as agent reaches the stratosphere. Afterward, after under questioning, the guards asserted that Agent Yuson had been attacked by the Class C and that he had been killed in a resulting altercation. 
Okay, so the moon is killing Class D personnel. Interesting. That's not where I thought it was going. <laughs> not in the slightest. Uh, but it's only you and me book, so I'm still I'm leaning on certain groups for this because it's only harming Class D and that one guard, and it seems like it's easy to stop too. So it's not like spreading, and it only seems to be affecting Class C anyways. So I I'm thinking certain groups. What are you thinking? Or just taking them. Oh, yeah, that's true. It could be just taking them. Yeah, we don't have any idea if they actually are dead or alive. That's true. Oh, yeah, you agree too? Yeah. And that's the last SAP of the night.